Let's get started. It's my Let's Get Started song. It's not much of a song. Let's get started. Okay. We're going to start in about 40 seconds. I'm going to test to make sure everything is working properly. Which I'm pretty sure it will be this morning for some reason. Let me clap. That lets me know if the audio is in sync. I like to do that sometimes. 20 seconds we'll be starting. Everything sounds great. So, that's awesome. Oh, I just listened to myself clap there. So, hey, welcome to this lesson about words that are hard to pronounce. We'll start in about five seconds. I think everything is working as it should be. Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about words that are hard to pronounce. There are some words in the English language that are difficult to pronounce. You look at the spelling of the word and it's even with the letters in front of you, it's hard to know how to say the word. There are some words on this list that are hard for me to pronounce even though I'm a native English speaker. Um but uh, and there's a few that I actually pronounce wrong and I'll talk about that as well. There's a few words, there's about two or three words on this list that have alternate pronunciations depending on maybe what you're talking about like a city name uh or how you were raised and taught to say the word wrong. So, I will make sure I highlight that as well. Um but once again, welcome to this English lesson on hard to pronounce words. I think you'll enjoy it. Hey, before we get started, let me just uh, say a few things. One, let me say hi to everyone in the chat. Let me see here. I see Madi Lolly Lolly, Know That, Mimi, Toner, Dr. Hamid. Uh oh, I don't have my reading glasses here this morning. Uh oh, oh, they're way back here. One sec. I'll I'll roll away and grab them. Then I'll roll back. This is better than the other day when the power went out on the camera, isn't it? That happened on Tuesday morning. So, Redfish, Travel, Dawa, Aldona, Suresh, Nightbot is here, of course. Uh, Ren- Renildo, Sita, Lolly Lolly, your cartoon here, Jack Lee. Lots of familiar names and some new names in the chat. Good to see all of you. Coco, make sure you uh, email and text your friends right now and let them know that Bob the Canadian is live. Let's fill up this live stream with as many people as possible. Jack Lee, uh, Jane, Sybil, Tessa, uh, Hussein, lots of people here ready to learn some English. A few things before we get started. Number one, um, make sure you use the chat to practice your English. Do read the chat. Do type things in the chat. Do have good English conversations while I'm talking about words that are hard to pronounce. Number two, this is new for this week. Try to say all of these words out loud a few times after I tell you how to pronounce them. Try to say the words that I'm saying. Uh and then also make sure if you have a question, use the form. There's a link below in the description uh and it will show up in the chat every once in a while if a member types exclamation mark link. So, if you type that, then Nightbot will respond and give you the link to the form and I'll stop a few times through the lesson, throughout the lesson in order to answer questions for you. So, once again, let me say hi to a few more people. Hi to Sirhil, Magali, Lucia, uh Handsome, Hajaj, Aziza, Aram, Teacher Aladdin is here. Bella, Olga P and once again to Maudie. Um oh and Mode popped in. Hi Mode. Didn't see you there. I think my uh chat scrolled by really really fast. M- Madi says, it's good to have a rolling chair. Yes, when you need to roll around and get your glasses from the other table but I do have everything else. Let me do an audio check one more time. Feel like I'm really big in the screen. Should I zoom out a little bit so you don't have to see <laughs> my big head in your screen? Um okay, I think we should get started. What do you think? I think we should do that too. I think everything's working. I did do this but then I got distracted. Oh, by the room my by the way, my room's a bit of a mess. We've been cleaning up the house because we have people coming over tomorrow. So, I've been trying to tidy up but I'm noticing that there's some uh there's something new here. I think that's my old stereo and then there's a bunch of junk under this table and a new table in the corner. 
Um, this is just my camera by the way. Um, oh, I did start uh putting out videos on my second channel again. Bob's short English lessons. Uh, that's why that camera's there because I went out yesterday and made a video. Okay, let's get started. Stethoscope. Stethoscope. I'm gonna try and say each word twice and then I'll try to give you some hints on how to pronounce it slowly. So, a stethoscope. Steth a scope. If you break the word into three parts, steth a scope um is how it's pronounced. This is the thing that the doctor uses to listen to your heart. So, the doctor will put the two pieces in their ear and then they will listen to your chest or they'll listen on your back. They might also use it to listen to your lungs. When a doctor uses a stethoscope, they're able to check your heart rate. They're able to hear if you have fluid in your lung lungs. Maybe you have a bit of pneumonia. So, they'll they'll use a stethoscope in order to check that. By the way, I was watching um the show Jeopardy the other day and the final answer was stethoscope and I didn't actually know how to spell it because if you listen, stethoscope, it almost sounds like it has the letter A in it but it doesn't. It's stethoscope but it is an O. So, a stethoscope, something that a doctor uses to check your heart and to check your lungs. Squirrel. This is on the list of English words that are the most difficult to pronounce for people learning English. A squirrel is a small rodent creature type creature that there's a lot of them here. I surprised I didn't see a squirrel this morning. So, if I say it slowly, squirrel, squirrel. Um if I say it quickly, it's almost hard harder to say. Squirrel, squirrel. It almost it's like we crunch the word together. Um but yes, squirrels run around in the fall and they collect acorns and other nuts from trees and they hide them everywhere so that in the winter they have something to eat. We have a lot of squirrels on our farm. They live in the trees behind the house and funny story, we once had a family of squirrels living in the roof of our house and it took me about a month to uh to get them out of there. Eventually, we figured out how they were getting in. A squirrel had chewed a hole and we waited until all of the squirrels left in the morning to go get their food and then we blocked up all the holes and they weren't able to come back. But squirrel, another hard to say English word. Rural. So, listen how I say it. Rural. I almost don't say the two syllables. By the way, rural refers to out in the countryside. You can live in the city which is considered an urban area or you can live in the country which is considered a rural area. So, let me say it slowly. Rural. 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 Sounds weird when I say it a whole bunch of times. I live in a rural area. I live out in the country. I get my mail delivered in a vehicle. There's a mail truck that comes and brings the mail. I don't have a mailman uh deliver my mail or a postal worker. So, I live in a rural location. When I go for a walk, I see fields. I see animals. I see trees because I live out in the country. I live in a rural location. Sixth. So, there are a bunch of people in line here. Let me count them. Yeah, I did pick a picture with six people. I'm assuming the girl on the other end is first in line and then second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. So, six is a number. When you add a TH, you're referring to what comes after the fifth person. So, sixth. Sixth. This is a challenge for some English learners because of the th at the end. It's a challenge for me. The more I think about pronouncing sixth, the harder it is for me to actually pronounce it properly. I have to kind of say it quickly in a sentence. I stood in line to buy Taylor Swift mo- uh concert tickets. I was sixth in line. I was sixth in line. So, it's a very difficult thing to do the X followed by a TH but if you are sixth in line, that means there are five people in front of you. 
comfortable. So, this word when you know how to pronounce it is fairly easy but the letters give you a different sense of how, uh, of how you might say it. When I sit on the couch behind me, this one here, it's very comfortable. Comfortable. So, the M and F slide together very comfortable and you don't over pronounce every syllable. It's comfortable. I have this sweater is very comfortable. I enjoy wearing this. It's nice and warm and comfortable. Um the couch is very comfortable. My blue van, the seats are uncomfortable but my red van has very comfortable seats. So, there are a number of sentences using the word comfortable. Okay. Now, this is another one where it's actually these are Jen's bouquets by the way. It's actually fairly easy to say once you know how to say it but when you look at the word, it can be very hard to figure out how to pronounce it but it's basically bo-k. 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 So, Jen likes to grow flowers and then and then Jen likes to make bouquets out of the flowers. So, when you have a bouquet, it's a bunch of different flowers put together usually held with an elastic and put in some nice paper or even in a nice vase or vase. Two pronunciations there. Um but yes, Jen sells likes to make bouquets. Jen likes to sell bouquets. I'm using the plural a lot. So, let me use the singular. It's nice to give a bouquet to someone on a special occasion on an anniversary or on Valentine's Day. It's nice to buy someone a bouquet, a bouquet of flowers. Very, very nice gift. Subtle. So, this has a silent B. If you notice, you don't pronounce the B. Subtle refers to when something is just kind of there. Yesterday, I ate some food from a restaurant and the rice had a really subtle uh I think there was just a a small amount of chili powder in it. So, it had a subtle amount of chili flavor. Like just a small tiny amount. So, subtle means just a little bit. So, you can hear subtle. Subtle. There's no B happening here. Um and again, I'm not going to pronounce these words wrong as an example. I will always say them correctly but just when you look at the word and you see the B, you do not pronounce the B and we refer to that as a silent letter. It's a silent B. Hey, let's look at some questions. People are probably gonna ask me about words. Uh let's see here. Okay, (laughs) I'll put this one up but I don't know if someone's just making fun but Ed Sheeran with diarrhea definitely is definitely a hard word to pronounce. So, diarrhea is actually a hard word to pronounce if you are just seeing it for the first time. This is when you are sick and you end up going to the bathroom a lot and sitting on the toilet. Um in English, we would say you're you go number two a lot. Uh definitely isn't particularly hard to to say but it does the spelling is misleading I would say. So, there you go. Two words there that are hard to say. No, that says, hello, Bob. Could you pronounce the word presumptuous? And if you don't have a slide for it, rural too. Oh, got you there. I got rural. Thanks in advance. So, presumptuous. When you are presumptuous, it means you think something is going to be a certain way before actually seeing it that way. We should get a good uh let's get a good uh uh dictionary definition. Presumptuous. Um Failing to observe that was permitted or appropriate. I hope I don't consider to be presumptuous if I oh, there are two meanings then. Definitely. So, failing to observe the limit of what is permitted. That's not a very good definition I don't think. I hope I won't be considered presumptuous if I offer some advice. Yeah, it means that you know something or you think you know something. Um let's see if I can get a better definition. Excessively bold or forward. It's used to describe someone behaving in an entitled or overfamiliar way. Yes, presumptuous. To presume things. To presume that you will want to know what I have to say. That's how I would define presumptuous. Okay, let me get the next one here. From Sela. Hello, my beloved teacher. I think the American state of Massachusetts is difficult to pronounce. Yes, Massachusetts is how I say it. There might be different pronunciations of Massachusetts but that's how I would say it. 
From Tina, hello, Bob. How should we pronounce softly and soften? So, when I speak softly, it means I speak with a really nice voice and a little bit quietly. Um soften is when if something's hard like you can put butter in a pan and soften the butter with some heat. So, softly and soften. I can see why you're asking because softly, softly, you do hear the T a little bit but soften you don't. Like, I put it down softly. The the T flaps a bit, right? It becomes a D softly but soften, you don't hear it at all. Similar to the word often. Some people say often instead of often. Uh let's see here. Ramon Sol, hi, teacher Bob. Saying agricultural is a bit difficult for me. Are there any words that challenge you in your language or in French? Bye. So, agricultural is fairly easy for me to say but yes, it, it's a bit of a mouthful we would say. Agricultural. So, when you have agriculture, the area is called the agricultural sector. Um and yes, there are words in French. Um it's hard for me to roll my R's. So, when I say things like très difficile, très, it doesn't roll as nicely as a French speaker. Um uh and even words like frère, frère, like brother, very hard for me to hit both R's nicely uh with a f- nice French accent. Ahmed, hello, teacher. How are you? What are called people who cannot pronounce words correctly because of their tongue? Thanks a lot. Um, I'm not sure but there are different reasons why it's hard to pronounce words. I know for some people, there are some English words where you don't naturally have the same sounds in your own language. So, for me, uh, an R that rolls like a sound. In English, we don't naturally do that. So, it's hard for me to make that sound. <coughs> so, there might be words that you have um in English, it's hard to say because you don't know where to put your tongue to pronounce it. Hung says, there's words written the same pronounced differently. Tear and tear. Yes, you tear the paper and tear a man's tears. Do you have any advice to help us pronounce those words correctly? Thanks. Uh no, like he read the paper. I'm going to read the paper. It's the same spelling but a different pronunciation. You just have to get used to them in context. In French, we have the word plus and plus. It's difficult for me to know when to use which pronunciation. So, um yes, I think it's just a matter of the more you practice, the more you'll be able to or the more you hear and practice, the the better you'll be able to that to to that. So, I have finally learned how to say hierarchy and I still struggle with hierarchical. Yes, um those are both very different. Let me make sure I'm pronouncing the second one right. Um pronounce oh, I can't type. I'm using all the wrong keys. Pronounce Oh, that's hierarchical. So, it is a higher hierarchical. You hardly hear it though. These are not words Bob uses very often. Yeah, I say hierarchy. So, it's hierarchy like hierarchy but it's almost becomes one syllable at the beginning. Very, very challenging. Not common words. I don't often go around talking about the hierarchical society. (laughs) From Nathan, good morning, Bob. Is world and word hard to pronounce? No, not for me. But for someone learning English, it's hard to roll the R into the L into the D with world. World and then word. When R's and D's come close together, for certain English learners, it's very, very challenging. So, let me say them one more time. We live in the world. There are this is a word. You see a word there. So, world and word. From Mikhailo. Hi, dear Mr. Teacher Bob. Review the word coincidence, please. Thanks a lot for your support on this complicated way. So, coincidence, when two things happen at the same time or when something happens you weren't expecting, it can be a coincidence. I was at the hardware store the other day and there was a there was a funny coincidence because my sister 
was at the hardware store as well. Um you might have it where um you two people pick a candy from a bag and you get the same candy and that's a coincidence. So, there you go. Coincidence. Okay. Let me do a couple more question questions from Alyssa. Good morning, Bob. Could you explain to us the explicit difference between the two adjectives gold and golden? Thank you and happy new year. So, he has a gold watch. The watch is golden. We don't use the word golden a lot. It's you hear the word golden like if you're watching a movie and there's a golden statue or you're watching it's it's usually used in some sort of like there's some artifact from Egypt and it's golden um but the difference between the two we the word gold is used far more often. Let's get the official uh difference between gold and golden. Gold is a noun, a mineral substance fine. Yeah, but you can also use it as an adjective, right? So, it was a gold statue and golden is an adjective. So, maybe we use the word gold wrong sometimes. No, you can use it both ways. Yeah, okay. So, what they're saying and I don't totally agree with this is a gold statue would be solid gold. A golden statue might just look like gold or only have a layer of gold on the outside. But when I watch ad- like a- an adventure movie and they're stealing something that's golden, I just think the whole thing is gold. From Harry 300, please pronounce continental. Bob, I heard people don't really pronounce the letter T. Continental. Continental. I don't turn my T's into D's with continental. So, when you go to a hotel, if there's a free breakfast in the morning, we call it a continental breakfast. Continental. I'm definitely hitting the T's and pronouncing the T's with continental. Uh, Mode says golden, made of gold. Gold, precious but there are exceptions of course. Yeah, I wonder if it's just really up to the speaker how to use the word golden versus gold. That would be my guess. But hey, let me have a sip of water and we'll get back to the lesson. Here we go. Wednesday. So, this is a weird one because the order of the D and the N get flipped when you say it. I say Wednesday. Wednesday. It's W-E-D-N but I pronounce it like it's W-E-N-D. Wednesday. Tuesday, Wednesday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You want me to say that even faster and you can practice that? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I almost I almost forgot the order. Wednesday. So, again, this is how we say it and not how we spell it. So, Wednesday. This past Wednesday. What did I do on Wednesday? I can't remember. Oh, I on Wednesday, I made a members only video. Wednesdays with Bob by the way. If you wanna hear the pronunciation of Wednesday, become a member and go listen to one of those videos. Welcome to Wednesdays with Bob. Remember, this isn't an official English. Never mind. I'm not gonna say the whole thing. Okay. So, this is an interesting one. If you don't know how to pronounce this, you might say Toronto. I I'm gonna go to Toronto but we actually say Toronto. 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 So, you notice that the second T does have a D sound. Toronto. If you're from Ontario, you might even say Toronto. I'm going to Toronto. Jen and I went to Toronto the other day to watch the Blue Jays. Um I'm gonna take the go train and I'm gonna go to Toronto tomorrow. So, we really native Ontario English speakers really mush it down. Ontario is the province I'm in but you should say Toronto. Toronto. Some people, if you're from Britain, I hear people from Britain often say, I'm gonna go to Toronto. Toronto and they make the T but in Ontario, we often say Toronto or Toronto. I'm gonna go to Toronto. I said it too many times. It's starting to sound it's starting to sound funny now. I think Eugene is here. Eugene is from Etobicoke and that's close to Toronto. So, he lives close to that city. Espresso. So, this is um oh, by the way, Toronto is a big city close to me. It's one of the biggest cities in Canada. I don't know if it's the biggest. Montreal is big. Toronto is big. Um so, that was a more proper pronunciation there. Toronto. 
Um, it probably all sounds the same to some of you though. Uh, espresso, a very, uh, very, very rich coffee drink. Espresso, when you go to an espresso bar, you can order an espresso. Comes in a little cup. Uh, you can also get a shot of espresso in something else. Maybe you're having milk with a shot of espresso and some sugar in it. Lots of different and fun uh drinks that can be made with coffee and espresso is one of them. I should have put the word cappuccino on here as well. That's a little difficult to pronounce if you just see the word as well. So, this word actually came up in a lesson and the first pronunciation I gave was wrong. This is mischievous. So, this kid has a slingshot and he looks a little bit mischievous but a lot of English speakers will say mischievous which is totally wrong but it's actually how I sometimes say it. So, even a native English speaker can learn to pronounce certain words wrong, okay? So, this kid, he has a little bit of a mischievous look. I might say he looks mischievous and that would be wrong but it would still come out. Later today, I'm gonna be talking with my sister. If I had to use this word, there's a chance I would pronounce it wrong but the correct uh, the correct pronunciation, mischievous. Um and that's probably a great picture. Um a kid with a slingshot. I had a slingshot when I was a kid. It was a lot of fun. I liked using it to do target practice and to shoot cans off of the picnic table. Sherbet. So, here's another funny one. So, by the way, sherbet, the French is sorbet. If you see that even on there, it says sorbet arc-en-ciel, rainbow sherbet. Um my entire life as a kid, I called this sherbet. I added an R before the T and I wasn't the only one. My parents called this sherbet. They would say, do you want ice cream or sherbet? But the proper pronunciation is sherbet. Again, I'm only giving you incorrect pronunciations if they are somewhat common, okay? Um so, sherbet, um some people love ice cream but some people like something more fruity and with no milk or cream in it. So, they'll eat sherbet instead. Um we often just call it sorbet by the way. We use the French word in Canada probably because we um our country is bilingual but sherbet. Translucent. Found this nice picture. I hope the person who owns it doesn't get mad at me for using it um but when you have something that is opaque Light can get through a little bit but you can't see through it. When it's translucent, it's like looking through fog a little bit. So, this middle window is translucent. You can sort of see through it but not as clear as if it was transparent. So, translucent, I added to the list because it was on a list of words that said uh they were hard to pronounce. So, translucent. Um my light right here has a nice translucent cover on it so that it's not as bright as it would be. Q. So, it's just like the letter Q. You get in a Q, you line up in a Q. We don't use this word in Canada a lot. We usually just say line. Oh, there was a huge lineup but you could say, oh, there was a huge Q. Um just one second here. Let me check something. Um I'm hitting all the wrong keys again. I'm just checking if there's a different um yeah, I'm just checking. I was just checking if there was a different pronunciation in British English but in American or North American English, we would say Q. It sounds like in Britain, they would say Q which is basically the same thing. I can't do a good British accent uh but a Q is a line. Why are there so many letters in this word? I don't know. It doesn't it doesn't need that many letters. <laughs> it could certainly be much much shorter but a Q is a line uh usually a line that you stand and wait in in order to buy something or do something. When you go to an amusement park, you might stand in a queue before you get on a ride. A choir is a group of people who get together and learn songs and then perform them and sing them for people. Um the reason this is hard to pronounce is because it starts with ch and ch doesn't often make a qu sound. Choir. Choir. And so, you end up wanting to use either ch or k 
but it's not the, either of those sounds. It's choir, qu, choir. So, this should be spelled with a Q probably. Anyways, a choir is a enjoyable thing to do, an enjoyable thing to be in if you like to sing. You can be in different sections in a choir. You might be in the soprano section or the bass section or the tenors um but uh, a choir. There were a lot of choirs singing last week for Christmas at various places. Drought. So, here's another one of those words like thought and throughout and thorough where we use the O U G H uh in the spelling. A drought is a time when it doesn't rain for several weeks on end. So, for a very long time, it doesn't rain and things begin to die. We sometimes have small droughts in Canada. Not usually major but enough to make the crops not do well. But in some countries, they will have a major drought and a drought is just bad for people, bad for plants, bad for animals. Um things don't grow if it doesn't rain. So, you certainly need rain in order for things to grow. So, once again, drought. If you think about the word out like I'm going to, he's going to go out and it's just with a dr- drought, drought. Scissors. This one is another example of a word that has more letters than it needs. It doesn't need the letter C as the second letter and so people sometimes accidentally try to pronounce the C but these are scissors. When you need to cut some paper, you use some scissors or a pair of scissors. Has anyone seen the scissors? That's a common question in our house. We have a pair of scissors in our kitchen in the same wooden block where we have knives. We have a nice pair of scissors uh and it goes missing every once in a while because scissors are super handy when you need to cut some paper, when you need to uh cut something open. It's nice to use a pair of scissors in order to do that. Silhouette. Probably from a French word. It looks very French, doesn't it? A silhouette is the outline of a person that you can see when there's a light coming towards them and you're behind them. So, you can see the silhouette of this tree because the sun is shining on the tree and you're standing back here. So, you see its silhouette. This is not a shadow, okay? This is not shade specifically but this is when you see, you can see the silhouette of a man you can see the silhouette of a park bench and you can see the silhouette of a tree. A silhouette has no color. It's generally very dark gray or black. Um I was gonna try and recreate that but I don't think I can. Um but here you can see um because the sun is shining in the distance, you can see the silhouette of a man with his cane but you can't tell what color his clothing is and you can see the silhouette of a bench and the silhouette of a tree. Hey, let's do some members only questions. Let me find that for a moment and get that set up. I feel like I'm talking a little too loud this morning. Sorry about that if I am. Uh if you're a member, you can ask questions directly in the chat. Let's see here. Scissors are handy, definitely. Um my Alexa always reminds me of my mispronunciation of choir, yes. Q or line. I don't like yeah, I don't like you would say either there, Vitor. I don't like either. Uh Madi, I hate staying in a long queue. It makes me frustrated. Yes. Oh, you can use Q in French as well. Fil d'attente. Lolly says hello to Harry 300. Hey, let me get a question on the screen. Uh oh. Am I gonna be able to pronounce this one? Hello from Uzbekistan. The country is hard for me to pronounce. Ophthalmology is a difficult word to pronounce. Do you think tongue twisters are good for improving our pronunciation? Would you recommend that? Yeah. I think tongue twisters are good for pronunciation and for fun and to make learning languages enjoyable. Uh you shouldn't do them like every week but every month or so if you're looking for something fun to do, learn a few no new tongue twisters like she sells seashells by the seashore. I had to say that one slowly. See? See, I already messed it up. She sells seashells by the seashore. Good for S's. Um how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Um how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? That's another one for you. I can't think of any more but you can certainly find many of them online. And there's a lot of YouTube videos 
um, where people um, give you uh, good examples of how to do it. Orsi, hi, Bob. For me, it was very surprising how you pronounced the word choir. It is completely different than, for example, chorus. Yeah. So, choir uses the qu sound, choir, and chorus uses the hard k sound, chorus. Very interesting, eh, with English. From Aladdin, I need to know how to explain this to my students. What, whole, and who. So, yeah. What, whole, and who. Whole, who. So, whole and who are similar but my lips are a little different, right? So, what, what, you can see my mouth open up. What, what are you doing? He ate the whole pie. He ate the whole pie and who made the pie? Who, whole, who. Yeah, my lips with whole, it's kind of, I feel weird pointing at my mouth. Whole, I do purse my lips a little bit but not as tightly as with who, who. Anyways, let's get to the chat. Uh, Marwanto says, hello, Mr. Bob. Hello, Marwanto. Good to see you here. Eugene says, going to work today. It is a Friday and it is a work day in Canada. It is not a holiday for some people. Mode says, we always see a silhouette behind your French door when someone walks by. Oh, yeah. So, you can see on Friday mornings normally, you can see my kids walking by getting ready for school. Um... No, that says Bob question but off topic, what happened to your finger? Oh, yeah, I should tell this story, should I? Let me hold this up. So, I am wearing, oh, I gotta cover my face so it focuses. I am wearing a bandage uh because yesterday I was working on the sink in the downstairs bathroom was leaking. So, I took the sink apart to put a new um like a gasket or we would call it an O-ring into the sink and as I was prying something Typically, when I work on something, I hurt myself. So, I usually wear gloves but I didn't have gloves on and I just kind of whacked my finger against something and I have a just a tiny cut. Um but it keeps the cut keeps opening up because it's on my knuckle. I don't know if you've ever had a small cut like on the part of your body that needs to move. So, whenever I do this, it starts to bleed just a tiny bit. So, I put a bandage on. Great question. I almost poked myself in the eye there. That would have been bad. Um Harry says, we have silhouette too. We don't put many letters there. We just use letters that you need to pronounce. <laughs> yeah, I wish English did that too. Lolly says, oh, Harry says hello to Lolly. Lolly says, it's difficult for me to pronounce the plural words ending in TH like moth, booths, clothes. So, the nice thing about clothes in North America is we don't use the TH. We just we say an S. So, we spell it that way but there are a lot of moths outside today. How many booths were there? See, I kind of even just drive right through the pronunciation, don't I? There were a lot of booths at the market. Booths, moths. So, the tongue goes out. Booths and then you pull the tongue back as you say it. Um let's see here. Madi says, I have tried tongue twisters and it worked well for me. Yeah, I would think it would because it forces you to think about how you're saying each word. Bode says, I was watching a Scottish guy once and he said squirrel and surprisingly when I tried to shadow him, it was easier for me to say it the Scottish way. Should I learn the Scottish accent and said squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. Probably squirrel probably happens in a throatier part. Squirrel, like lower in the mouth in Scottish English. No, that said, I thought of a kitchen accident. No, good guess though but yes, definitely a plumbing accident. There we go. Amran says, hello everyone. Hi, Amran. Eugene says, can you please say San Gervasio Mayan ruins Cozumel, Mexico. I don't know if I said Gervasio, right? Mayan ruins Cozumel, Mexico. So, you'll have to look up the San Gervasio. Lolly says, thanks, Bob. No, that says, how would you pronounce? So, I say it wrong. I say Worcestershire sauce but I think it's Worcestershire in the UK. We we just say it wrong in our house. Most North American English speakers just totally mess up the word 
Worcestershire sauce. Like even that's wrong but but that's what we call it. Worcestershire sauce. So, I've said it like three different ways now. I think in England, it's probably Worcestershire sauce or something but so, I am the wrong person to learn that from. I actually left it off the list because I don't know how to say it properly. We do have some though. It's in the fridge. Uh Harry 300. Sometimes I think that my language is the easiest language in the world because words are easy to read. Everything is based on the letters you see in a word. I do wish English was more like that for especially for English learners. Um I find that it's 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 unfortunately unfortunate uh that English has so but we've borrowed words from so many languages, right? Um uh question from over here. Chase's Overland Canteen. Canteen. Hello, Bob. Yukon is a very short word but I always feel that I pronounce it incorrectly. How do Canadians generally pronounce it? So, I say Yukon. Um Yukon. Yeah, my de- uh my uncle had a truck. It was a Yukon. GMC Yukon. It's like a Denali but um the Yukon. He's going up to the Yukon. By the way, Yukon is a territory in Canada. Uh up way up north. The Yukon. Um from Bruno. Hi, Bob. Can you help with these words? Through, through and thought. Sorry. I think you probably forgot an O on one of them. The first two words are the same word. Through and through. You know, I can um let me see here. I'm trying to think of an easy way. Like, I can I could put my headphone through here, right? I can put it through. I was gonna make another do another example but it would have been inappropriate <laughs> um and thought. You know, I had a thought the other day. In my mind, I had a thought. Um from Amran. Teacher Bob, I hope you are good. Please, how would you pronounce the word thermometer? So, thermometer. So, what's difficult is in a car, you have a speedometer and to measure temperature, you have a thermometer. So, th- speedometer, thermometer. Oh, they do kind of rhyme, don't they? Never mind speedometer in a car to see how fast you're going and thermometer to measure the temperature. No, that says I looked it up online and found it to be too hard. Oh, wait. There's a little heart in front. Someone has to make a comment so I can see the rest of um oh, I found it to be in the top 10 hard to pronounce English words. Yes, that's definitely Worcestershire sauce there. That's my pronunciation now. Sorry to not be able to teach that one correctly. Um Torres Wu says, in British English, when people say, do you know what I mean? It would be pretty short form like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, if I say, do you know what I mean? If I was talking to my brother at full speed, I'd say, do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Um and I think in other versions of English, it's even shorter. Uh let's see here. Vitor says, I find the word tortoise a bit difficult to pronounce. I have one by the way. Cool. A tortoise similar to a turtle? I don't wanna say it's the same as a turtle because I don't know if there's a slight difference but tortoise. That's how you pronounce that one. Uh Leo says, hi teacher Bob. Hi teach Bob but it should be teacher. Interesting topic today and happy new year. Can you please pronounce month and it's plural months. Is there any difference? Thanks. Yes. So, right now, it is the month of December. Singular. Month. Month. You can see my tongue comes out. Month. Like, you see my tongue when I say it. Um there are 12 months in a year. So, similar to moths, you can see my tongue is out and I I pull my tongue in when I make the plural. Months. 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 So, I'm making, I'm pulling my tongue in and making an S sound when I say the plural. Okay. Let me get, I'm gonna turn off members only chat but hey, I will get to those last one or two members only ones. Just give me a sec to turn that off and then let me see here. We have one from uh know that. Let's see. (laughs) <laughs> Madi says, how about this one? Pneumon ultra microscopic silcovolcano. Yeah, I probably said it wrong. Never used that word before but it's gotta be one of the longest and hardest ones. 
And then Mode says Worcestershire sauce. Just don't look at the spelling. Worcestershire. Worcestershire. There we go. Thanks, Mode. Know that says, by the way, I also came across the National Spelling Bee Awards. Since 2005, it has also taken place in Canada. Oh, very cool. I wonder if we add use to a lot of words if they use the Canadian and British spelling. Future says, teacher Bob, can you pronounce contraction word and suffix past tense? Um, yeah, I don't know. Like suffix, I don't use that as a verb. So, I'm not sure. Contraction word. So, a contraction would be something like, I cannot do that. I can't do that. I do not want to do that. I don't do that. So, I'm I'm a little unclear about the second part of the question but those would be some examples. Vitor says, tortoise doesn't know how to swim, Bob. A turtle knows. He <laughs> he. That's how I would describe it. Oh, yes. Got it. Okay. Thanks, Vitor for telling me the difference between tortoise and turtle. Um by the way, I do sometimes overpronounce my words. Like I just said turtle but if I was speaking, I would say turtle. Right? The the T makes more of a D sound. Unique. Again, a word that isn't actually hard to pronounce. Unique. Unique. This yellow ball is unique. All of the other balls are blue but this yellow ball is unique. It's one of a kind. So, mostly I would say this word is hard to know how to pronounce if you've never said it before because of its spelling. So, here's an interesting one. In North America, we say clothes. Um the things you wear. I'm wearing clothes today. Good thing. It's important to wear clothes. It's proper and in a civilized world, people wear clothes. In North America and in Canada, we say this the same as to close a door. Okay? I am wearing clothes. This morning, I oh, I'm going to close the door. Okay? When I get in the van, I like to close the door. When I get up in the morning, I put my clothes on. If you are in Britain though, if you are learning a British pronunciation, you do hit the th a little bit. Clothes. I I don't. Never do. It's always clothes, you know. Uh I have to wash my clothes. I have to do the laundry. I have to hang up my clothes after I wash them. The th sound is not pronounced when I say this word. Need. Sometimes we have silent letters. So, when you make bread, you need to knead the dough. I just used two versions of knead there by the way. N-E-E-D. You need to knead the dough. Should I put that in the chat so you can see it? You need to knead the dough. And then dough itself is maybe a little hard to pronounce. Um sorry, I got distracted for a sec here. Um Uh when we make bread though, we make it in a bread machine. So, the machine needs the dough for us but it's an important step in the bread making process. Uh you need to make sure that you um let the dough rise and then knead the dough once or twice depending on the type of bread you are making. Ricochet. So, if you are familiar with when a gun fires a bullet If it hits a hard surface at a very shallow angle, it might bounce off. It will ricochet. So, again, look at the word ricochet. We're pronouncing a lot of things differently than you might expect. First of all, ricochet, ricochet. So, the O has more of an ah ah sound, ricochet. And then the CH is making a sh sound. So, ricochet. If you watch old westerns, when they're having a gunfight. Often, you will hear bullets ricochet off the buildings around the people or if you're watching a movie where there's a shootout, you might hear um bullets or you see a little dent show up in the wall beside someone and the bullet will ricochet off of the wall. So, ricochet. Probably a French word. Fluorescent. So, most of our lights are LED now but we do still have some fluorescent bulbs. Um by the way, I spelled this word wrong the first time. It's U-O. This is correct but even as an English speaker, I made a mistake and then uh, Google auto corrected it for me. Uh, A fluorescent bulb is a tube of glass filled with a gas that can 
emit light when electricity goes through it. That's the basic non-scientific definition. Um but it's fluorescent. Again, you really just make one vowel sound fluorescent at the beginning. It's two letters U O but it's just fluorescent. The same as you know my chair is on the floor and this is a fluorescent light. Sorry, it's actually this is actually an LED light right here. I'm pointing here but um fluorescent. Pneumonia. So, I think near the beginning of the lesson we talked about stethoscope and I said a doctor could use a stethoscope to listen to your heart or your lungs. Uh maybe even your stomach a little bit but if you have pneumonia, it means you have fluid in your lungs. It means you're very very sick and a doctor might use a stethoscope to listen to your lungs to see if you have pneumonia. Another word where the P is silent. You don't pronounce the P at the beginning. It's simply pneumonia. Um I had pneumonia years ago. In 2006, I had pneumonia. Um really badly. It wasn't good at all. Um I was I was off work for a long time then. I tend to get sick. I should stop doing that. I should try to uh not get sick. Receipt. Here is a receipt from Walmart. I think this person bought a printer. Um there's a silent P in this letter, receipt. The receipt is the small piece of paper that you get when you buy something. Yesterday, I was at the mall and I bought something and on the screen, it said, do you want to print the receipt? Do you wanna receive the receipt via email or both? And I selected both. I thought that sounded like a good idea to get the receipt via email as well as a paper copy. February. (coughs) Excuse me. So, there's an R in here and some people do say it but most people don't. February. February. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. February. I sometimes, you shouldn't do, I sometimes say February to be funny. Okay? Um but most of the time people will say February. You will sometimes hear people say February but it's February 99% of the time, if you hear someone say that month, they will say February even though there's an R there. It's kinda like um we just decided it was too hard to say the R so we say February. Penguin. I don't know why this is on some lists of hard to pronounce words. Penguin. 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 I think for most people learning English, this should be fairly straightforward. Penguin. Um penguins by the way live in Antarctica. They don't live in the Arctic. I think there's only penguins at the South Pole. Um but penguins are these uh bird animals that eat fish and swim in really cold water and uh, there's a whole movie about them, March of the Penguins. I think I watched that a long time ago but it was a good movie I think. Uh penguins. Uh they're cute, right? Hey. That's the end of the formal part of the lesson with slides. I am going to now just finish off some questions if there are any and we will uh wrap this lesson up. Let me go to my question form. Looks like I got three left from Zorian. Hi, Bob. I used to have a B2 level but now I've dropped to A2. How can I restore my B2 level? So, you would wanna figure out why your level dropped. If your level dropped because you simply weren't practicing English, maybe for a whole year you didn't speak English, then I would say simply find a book to read, find something to listen to, a good podcast or watch a bunch of TV shows. Definitely get a tutor when you're going from the, I'm surprised you went from B2 to A2. Usually people will drop a level but maybe it's been many, many years since you've learned English. Uh but I would, I would tell you this. Um it does all come back to you. If you were to hire a tutor, do a lot of reading, do a lot of listening, do some writing, I think in about a month, you would move from A2 to B1 like that quickly. Most people, it takes six months to move a level but I think if you were at B2, um just jump back into all of the, do all of the things as I normally recommend. Allen Burke, what pronunciation channels on YouTube could you recommend to us? Are there any channels especially for boosting pronunciation? So, Rachel's English does more pronunciation than most other people I think. Like she'll do 
let me see. Let me make sure Rachel's English. It is American pronunciation by the way but Rachel's English um like how to sound like a native speaker and improve your spoken English and then she's really good um at showing you exactly how things are pronounced. So, I would look at Rachel's English. It's American English but look at that channel for pronunciation. Um from Kale, kindly pronounce wall. So, this is the wall. War, when two countries fight, it's war and world. We live in the world. So, wall, war, world. There you go. Um <laughs> Eva, last question. Bob, why did you get rid of the squirrels? Well, they were living in the house and running around above my head during the pandemic while I was trying to teach my online classes. Um so, yeah, we did not enjoy them. Now, we just simply blocked them from getting back in the house. They still live somewhere. They probably live in the trees behind my house now but uh yeah, we did not enjoy um the sound of the squirrels running around in the house. Um and that's gonna wrap. I think that's gonna wrap it up. Yeah. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you have a good Friday. I hope you have a good weekend. Um I'm looking forward to this weekend because even though Christmas is over, um I will still be seeing family over the next few days. So, that's lots of fun. Um thank you so much for uh watching and learning. Remember this lesson in particular uh when the shorter version comes out, it's worth rewatching and trying to pronounce uh the words that you hear after I say them shadow me a bit. So, when I say controversial which Amran is asking about, how about the word controversial? I heard some people pronounce it as an S sound and others with a Z. Thanks for you. Thanks, Bob. You are amazing. So, controversial. I do like the sh controversial. That's how I say it. Um let's see here. Coco says, hi. Thanks for the lesson. Usually, we don't pronounce at the end of the words but sometimes we pronounce oh, I-N-G. We pronounce it how we know if we pronounce it or not. Yeah, that just comes with practice. Uh Unsel, are other militaries such as are other military terms such as colonel, lieutenant, etc. usually read very differently from how they are written? Yes. So, colonel, um lieutenant. Sometimes in Canada, we say lieutenant which I don't know where that comes from. Very British. No, that says, thank you, Bob, for the lesson. I wish you and your family a wonderful weekend. I hope that you have a good and relaxed start to the new year. Thank you again for everything this year. No problem. Um let's see. Mode says, thanks for the last lesson in 2023. Be careful when you go for a walk and when you do some work around the house. Yep. Watch out for dogs and taps, I guess. <laughs> uh Vitor says, see you next year. Ralph says, thanks once again. No problem. Cat Diary says, thanks for this great lesson. Dear teacher Bob, there are many words to repeat and repeat once again. Yes, repetition is very, very good. So, a lot of other well wishes. Thank you so much. I guess this is the last lesson of 2023. I mean, it'll come out in a shorter version on December 31st but this is the last live lesson. It's been a great year. I, I've had a lot of fun. Um I still enjoy doing this so I'm going to keep doing it. So, I uh, look forward to another live stream Tuesday. Instead of making a video, I'm just doing live streams during the break and uh I'll see all of you again next Friday as well with another lesson. So, it's been fun. Um I guess I'll say happy new year to all of you because I won't uh be doing a live stream until January 2nd. Um I hope you had a good 2023 and I hope you set some really good English learning goals for 2024. I hope the year goes well for you. Bye. You guys are awesome. Have a great weekend and a great day.